So I've been getting a lot of requests about making Doom Emacs content. A lot of you guys are Emacs users, but you prefer starting with Doom Emacs, which is a distribution of Emacs. It's got a lot of really cool customizations and optimizations, speed improvements, and it's just really configured in a nice way. And I've used Doom Emacs in the past. I certainly don't mind making more Doom Emacs content. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch away from using my custom config of GNU Emacs, and I'm going to switch back to Doom Emacs. So the first thing you need to do before installing Doom Emacs, especially if you're an already uh, an Emacs user, maybe you already have your own config files, make sure that any previous Emacs config files have been deleted from the system because they will cause you some headaches later. So in your home directory, make sure that you do not have a .emacs.d directory. Uh, I don't because that was the old style, uh, the, the directory that the Emacs configs used to go in. Here in recent years, everybody puts Emacs configs in dot config slash Emacs. And I did have that directory, but I renamed it to Emacs.bak for backup because I wanted to save my files. But I needed to rename that directory because if that directory, the dot config slash Emacs directory is here, then when I try to launch Doom Emacs, it's actually still going to read my old GNU Emacs configs and it's not going to be right. Also, if you're a previous Doom Emacs user, but you're doing a new installation, make sure that you don't have an existing .config slash Doom directory. And I did because I've got Doom Emacs configs from years past. I've got those backed up as well. So make sure that none of those directories exist and then go to the Doom Emacs GitHub. And on the GitHub, you will find installation instructions. Go to the table of contents, click install. And then you have two lines here, this line and this line. So it's two lines that you have to enter in the terminal to go ahead and install Doom Emacs. So let me copy the first line and then switch over to an empty workspace. I'm going to open a terminal and let me zoom in so you guys can see. And then enter that first command. What that does, that's a git clone. So it cloned a repository, a repository of some installation scripts. And then we need to run the installation script. Uh, go get this command right here. And what this command does, it runs one of the scripts in this repository that it just cloned. And it's going to ask you a yes or no question. Just answer yes to everything, any questions it asks. Typically, the Doom Emacs installation does take several minutes because Emacs, if you're new to Emacs, Emacs is almost like an operating system unto itself in the fact that it has a package manager. It's got repositories of Emacs packages. And right now it's installing several of these Emacs packages, right? It's going to these repos of software and grabbing these Emacs packages. Two of the most popular repositories of Emacs packages are Elpa and Melpa. That's what it's doing right now. It's installing various Emacs packages that create Doom Emacs. So the installation completed. It only took two minutes and 33 seconds for Doom Emacs to install. So that was pretty quick. Uh, now let's go ahead and try to run Doom Emacs for the very first time. I will say because I was already using Emacs, I do need to uh, go ahead and kill the existing Emacs that is running in the background because I had the Emacs daemon running in the background on my system. So I needed to kill that. And now let's actually try to run Emacs for the very first time. So let me close this terminal. I have a key binding to launch Emacs. And let's see if it actually launches. And it does. So this is the familiar start screen for Doom Emacs. Now the first thing you probably want to do is you want to do some basic configuration right away because Doom Emacs may or may not have all of the programs installed that you want. So if you actually scroll down here in the uh, dashboard in, in the opening screen here, you can see open private configuration space F capital P. Private configuration are your Emacs config. So space F capital P. And you can see it's asking which file do I want to open. The very first one we want to take a look at is init.el. So let's hit enter on that. Uh, the font size is very small out of the box here. So I'm going to zoom way in. But once I start configuring my proper Emacs config, right, we're going to make that font a little bigger for my 
old and tired eyes. So Doom Emacs has three main config files. If I do space F capital P again, you can see those three main config files are init.el, config.el, and packages.el. Let me escape out of that. The init.el is this interesting document here where you have this code block here with various lines of stuff commented or uncommented. So this is where you turn on and off some of the default Doom Emacs modules. For example, if I needed Chinese font support, instead of this being commented out with the two semicolons, I would get rid of the two semicolons uh, to enable that Chinese support. Now, I did not need Chinese support, so let me actually undo that. We are using the evil key bindings out of the box, so all your Vim commands work, so I just hit U on the keyboard to undo that last thing I did. So I'm going to scroll down and see if there's anything that right away I know I need to enable. So uh, we've got uh, things like NeoTree. So NeoTree and TreeMax, uh, both of those are kind of uh, like uh, if you're used to NerdTree and Vim, they give you the little sidebar uh, tree view, basically a little mini file manager, if you will, in a sidebar. It's not something I typically use, but for purposes of this video, I will go ahead and turn on TreeMax just in case I want to use it at some point. I don't know. And you can see we've got comments for, you know, each little group of modules. These were the UI modules. These are the editor modules. I don't think I need to turn on any of these. The Emacs, we've already got Dear Ed, the file manager, electric mode, which is something I would always turn on anyway. I do like iBuffer for buffer management, so I'll turn that on. EWW is the Emacs web browser. That's your Emacs web browser, so I'll turn that on as well. I do need some terminals, so we have the option of four different terminals for me. We definitely need the e-shell, so that's the Emacs shell, and we need one standard kind of terminal. The best one of the bunch is vterm, so I will turn that on as well. Then we've got tools. We've got this section called tools. Uh, most of this stuff is turned off because depending on what kind of development work you're doing, you may or may not need a lot of this stuff. So for me, uh, the only thing I would need i do like having pdfs uh, the ability to view a pdf in emacs so i'll turn that on that's going to install a package called pdf tools if i scroll down we have this section here os uh, tty improve the terminal emacs experience looks like that's for mac os users so i'll just leave that alone obviously i'm on a linux system and then we have languages so these are all the scripting and programming languages that you need support for so this will give you you know your syntax highlighting and all of that so go through here if you're a programmer or developer and uncomment the languages that you work in all the time for me Emacs Lisp obviously is here because you're going to need that for your Emacs config but things that i would probably enable support for would be Haskell, because I do play with some Haskell programs like Xmonad all the time. I would also enable support probably for Python if it's not already here. There it is, Python. Let's go ahead and enable that. And then we've got SH for your uh, common shells. So, you know, when you're doing a bash script or whatever, it's got proper syntax highlighting for that stuff. And because I don't want to install a million things, I'll just leave those as uh, the languages for now. If I need to turn on other stuff, I will at a later date, but I don't want to install a million different uh, programming modules right now. And then email, I'm not gonna use email in Emacs. Emacs does have a fantastic email program called MU4E, but I'm not going to be doing that in my Emacs. Uh, just for privacy reasons, I do a lot of stuff on camera with my Emacs. I don't want my email in Emacs. Finally, do I need a IRC client inside Emacs? I don't really need that. What about RSS, uh, like a newsfeed reader? I will turn that on. That should install a program called LFeed is what I'm guessing. LFeed is an Emacs program that is an RSS feed reader. EMMS is the uh, multimedia player. It plays music, and I do sometimes use that inside Emacs as well, so I'll turn that on. And for now, I think that's what I'll go with. So let me Hit escape and colon W to write, same as Vim, right? Colon W to write the file to save the file. Next, I'm going to do space F 
capital P once again to go to our private configurations, our Emacs configs. So this is basically it goes to the folder dot config slash doom. That's where these three files, the init.el, the config.el, and the packages.el. I'm not going to play with config.el today, I don't think, because that's a much deeper topic. We did what we needed to do with init.el. Now let's go to packages.el. And this is where you would add third-party packages, so things that are not default Doom modules that you can turn on and off in the init.el. And the way this works is inside parentheses, you type package exclamation, and then the package that you want to install. And of course, the package needs to be available in one of the repos it's going to look in. It needs to be available in Elpa or Melpa. So I know, for example, I do like the TLDR package inside Emacs, so I'll go ahead and install that just as a uh, a test run. Let's actually see if this works. So now that I've edited the init.el and the packages.el, let's go ahead and restart Doom Emacs and let it install all of these packages it needs to install. So space HRR is the key binding, the default key binding in Doom Emacs to restart Doom Emacs. So if you've made any changes with the configuration, it will install the programs it needs and then do a, a hot reload of Doom Emacs. Hopefully with now all of these various packages that we asked it to install. Now let's see if this worked. So if I do meta X on the keyboard, meta X is alt X. So meta X, this is your command prompt in Emacs. Any Emacs programs that are installed will be here. So if I type TLDR, it is not here. So it did install the packages, but I need to do a, a restart of Doom Emacs. So Let's do meta X and type restart and see if there is, yeah, doom slash restart, restart Emacs and the daemon if active, because I still may have started it with the server. So I need to kill the, the Emacs server, the Emacs daemon and restart, or I could do the key binding here. Let's do the key binding space Q capital R. So let me escape space Q capital R. And it says, do I really want to exit Emacs? Yes or no? Yes and it restarts Doom Emacs. Now, let's do meta X TLDR, and TLDR is here. If I hit enter, this is the too long didn't read program. First, it has to go and download the database for TLDR. This may take a second. And now TLDR is working. Let's read the TLDR for, I don't know, the said command. If I hit enter, there is the TLDR information. Now let me cue to quit out of that. Now let's also check and see if we have some of the things that we installed from the init.el. I enabled Python support, right? Python syntax highlighting. Let me go find a Python file. So if I do space period here inside Doom Emacs, that's a default key binding, space period. It actually opens a little mini buffer here, a little mini file manager where I can navigate to, let's navigate to dot config slash qtile and then inside here I have config.py and let's see if we have proper syntax highlighting in a Python file and yes we do looks quite lovely doesn't it now the font size is still really small the default font size uh, again for my old eyes I'm gonna have to change this right away I said I wasn't going to play with the config.el let's add one line today to the config.el so space f capital P to go to our private configurations right so that's dot config slash doom and then go to config.el and uh, there is some default stuff here but we need to play with the font and we need this variable here doom dash font that's the primary font to use and if I go back to my web browser here on the doom emacs github there was uh, some information as far as documentation on configuration and I specifically looked or a line on how to set the font. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna copy that line and let's go back into Doom Emacs and let's go ahead right here where it was doing some stuff with the font. Let's paste that, except I don't have Fira Mono as my font. Uh, I don't have it installed anyway. I'm gonna use JetBrains Mono and then the size 12 is too small. I need something quite a bit bigger. I'm gonna go 15 and now let me colon W to write. Let me space HRR to restart. Uh, I, I don't think I needed to do that. I think I needed to do the actual, uh, what was it? Space Q capital R to restart. Hit yes. 
There we go, much better font size. And now, you know, when I go and look at the config file, space F capital P, and go back to config.el, you can see the font is much more normal. <laughs> you know, those really tiny fonts, I guess, are, are fine for younger people and people with really good eyes. Uh, but this is a, a much more appropriate uh, default font size for somebody like me. So there you have it. That's all I'm going to do here on day one with Doom Max, or, or, or a new day one. I've had a day one with Doom Max in years past, but now switching back to Doom Max, you know, this was fun. Uh, I love how easy it is to work with Doom Max. It's dead simple to configure. And here on day one, we played with the init.el by turning on and off some of the default Doom modules, right? And then we played with the packages.el by installing third-party packages that are not part of the default Doom modules. And then we even played a little bit with the config.el, which uh, is your proper config file. And that's where you do things like, for example, change the font change the font size. I think that was very important to do here on camera because if I was really needing to do that right away, chances are a lot of you guys, when you switch to do me max, are also going to want to change that font right away. And of course, there will be more videos to follow as we do more customization to my Doom Emacs config. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt Steve, 40 millimeter, Cap Caveman, Darloff, Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roll, and more Gentoo and Ubuntu and Willie, these guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Doom Emacs would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like Doom Emacs, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.